Hey, hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Generations Church Online. So glad you decided to join us from wherever you may be, living room, bedroom, wherever you're at. We're just so glad you guys decided to join us this morning. We're going to enter into a great time of worship here in a second, so I'm looking forward to that with you guys. We're going to have a great message from Pastor Mark. So many good things happening here at Generations Church, even though we're doing everything online. We're so glad you decided to join us. So wherever you are, would you just prepare your heart and let's worship him this morning. You, you are here, 
never stop working, never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work. Even when I don't feel it, you work. Never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop. You This time during our service, we normally like to let people come up to the front, but we all know that we're all at home or on the couch or in our apartment or in our car watching on our phone. But this time we would just like to be able to extend a prayer. And for all that we know, all of the fear of all of the anxieties and all the depression of all of this conflict going on, we just know that God is our way maker. And Lord, we just like to right now extend a prayer. That Lord Jesus, that you would come down with your loving arms and your Holy Spirit. Just wrap your arms around us, Lord. Lord, that you would bless us. Lord, that you would heal us. Lord, that you would heal our lands of this virus. And Lord, we thank you that you are our way maker. And Lord, we just ask you right now in the name of Jesus to bless us, Lord and heal us in your name. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Welcome back. Man, what a great time of worship that was. Just want to make mention of a couple of things before we uh, continue on in our service. First off is the check-in. Would you guys just check in? Let us know how many people uh, were with you this morning as you uh, um, participated in the service with us. You can click down below to do that. Let us know if you have any prayer requests, any needs you might have, any f needs maybe some somebody in your family or some of your friends have. We want to help reach out and really um, just impact our community during this time. So um, go ahead and check in and let us know that. Um, also, too, our life groups are continuing, so make sure you're um, staying in contact with your life group leader. Not sure what a life group is, or maybe you want more information on uh, what a life group is. There's a link down below. You can click on that. and just says life groups. Let us know your name, address. Give us all your um, particulars, and we can get you uh, hooked up with a great life group. Um, another thing that we do during this time is giving. Um, I know it's been different <laughs> during this whole experience, just giving online, calling in, giving. What's going on? Well. Um, there's actually three ways you can give uh, to Generations Church. You can do it uh, by mail, mail it to our P.O. box. You can um, text in a gift, or you can do it digitally online. And we're actually adding another um, option for you this week. Uh, this Thursday between 9 and noon, if you want to um, deliver it to the church in person, we'll have somebody in the office there. You can just drop it off, and um, we'll be gladly uh, accepting of that. So thank you so much for partnering us during this, uh, during this time. Um, lastly, we're going to take a one minute break, so go ahead, grab a cup of coffee, top off your coffee, use the restroom, um, whatever you need to do. We're going to be back in one minute with a great uh, message from Pastor Mark. See you then.
Hey guys, good morning. Welcome. Good to see you again this week. And wow, you know, we're figuring all this out still as we go along here. We're doing our filming each week, so hopefully you're connecting with us online. Um, you're able to connect with your life group leader and uh, do some Zoom groups. That's what we're calling them now, just staying connected with people. Um, you know, hopefully uh, you're feeling connected and not feeling too separated. And uh, let's just get right into the word this morning. Amen. I want to talk to you guys about something that's actually been on my heart. It has to do with a comment that somebody made about a week ago. And it was actually a phrase, two words that they used um, when we were talking about the current situation, the coronavirus and separation and quarantine and all that. Um, somebody used the term, uh, they said they felt that it was an opportunity for a divine reset. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning, the idea of divine reset. Um, before we go on, I want to say that that term actually is way more popular than um, I knew when the person said it and I heard it. Um, there are economists, and I don't know if you've heard this lately, kind of a theory, but there are economists and others that are talking about a need to reset the economy because of things like they're talking about inequality. And so, yeah, I was surprised to find out that there are actually people around the world talking about this whole thing being an opportunity for um, resets of different kinds. And one of those things was kind of like a, a reset on the economy. Now, of course, this is people's opinion. Um, uh, there are others that are talking about um, the need to reset housing costs. Uh, maybe some of you have heard some of this in the news, medical costs. Um, and other professionals are talking about the need to reset how we think about work. A lot of people are working from home now. Um, we're being asked to reset how we think about life and how we think about leadership even. Now, regardless of all those things, um, for me, uh, the highest reset is the divine reset. Uh, when I heard those words a couple of weeks ago, uh, I haven't been able to shake them since I heard that. Something spoke to me deep inside. Come on, somebody. You know, when something speaks to you and you get a little witness, um, you want to pay attention to that. Let me just add, you know, a little side note this morning for people that are listening. That's a great little bit of advice that, you know, if you are doing something, you see something and something stirs inside of you. Maybe you see someone who's in need and you're just really, uh, you know, moved by that. Those are sometimes the little whispers of God's voice. And so when somebody said divine reset and something kind of stirred inside of me and I haven't been able to shake it for the last week and a half or so. I feel like I want to start praying and ask God about this and I feel like he's been sharing some things with me and I want to share them with you this morning. Um, let's just have a little definition here. Um, uh, to reset is to set back to the initial state, to set anew, uh, to adjust again after an initial failure. Um, it's a recalibration back to the starting point or the principles that were there at the starting point. And, you know, I'm thinking about divine reset and it's interesting for me, you know, I'm just thinking how God can use a season of our greatest inactivity and turn it into a season of our greatest productivity. That's what I'm feeling God wants to do through this season of kind of a reset. Um, in scripture, probably the most jarring passage that communicates what I'm talking about is uh, found in the book of Revelation. Uh, you know, that's the last book in the Bible. Amen. Uh, it is a well-known passage that I'm going to read to you where certain churches are being addressed about their behaviors. Um, uh, really, it's a snapshot of issues that all churches face at some point, at one time or another. But there's one church that's singled out uh, that's being spoken to here. And um, there's a particular issue that I feel is called out that a lot of the other issues that these churches have that John is speaking to here, um, they're kind of, uh, this is a springboard issue that causes all these other issues to happen. Let me read it to you. It's in Revelation chapter 2, uh, verse 2 through 5. It's a real familiar passage. I know your works your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. That's a compliment to the church. And you have tested those who say they're apostles and are not, and you have found them to be liars. So 
everything's good so far. You're being diligent. You're looking for solid teachers. Uh, you, you know, you don't like evil. Um, uh, you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Wow, those are still compliments to this church. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. And that doesn't sound good. So... The issue here is that the church had been doing good things. And I feel that, you know, we're a part of a church that does good things. Um, we look for accurate teaching. You know, we're, we're following, you know, the right leaders, hopefully. But there was something with this church, and it resonated with me in some respect, that they had left their first love. And, you know, the last month, over a month now, We've been engaged in things, honestly, that we haven't been doing in a while. Um, you know, food ministry, helping people in need like that, getting out in the neighborhood and really meeting needs. And it's just kind of, for me, a call. This is a call. This season, I don't know. You know, we've been five, six weeks now into quarantine. I might need a couple months to kind of recalibrate. Now, I'm not wishing that on us. That's tongue in cheek. But you know what I'm saying? This season is causing me to look at my life again, to look at the things that are most important, to look at our church and say, what are we doing? As we're feeding people and we're meeting needs and we're calling more people than we've called in a while. Uh, we're meeting more needs than we've met in a while. We're being more intentional about connecting with leaders, calling, checking on people than we have been in a while. Those are all good things to me. And I feel like those are the things that God's using through this season. It's kind of a divine reset, resetting our heart to God's heart. Amen. Uh, this season that is upon us is causing me to re-examine and where necessary reset areas of my life. I feel like this is the most profound thing that will come out of this season. It's not going to be an, an economical reset. It's not going to be things of that nature. The most profound thing that's coming out of this season for me and I think that God would agree with this, uh, is that we're looking at ourselves and re-examining our relationship with Him. It's crazy how a season where we're quarantined in our homes, where we can't go to the store we want to go to, we can't go to the movies we want to go to, how that would cause us to re-examine. I know there's people that are identifying with what I'm saying right now, but in this season too, you also are looking at things and kind of re-evaluating what's most important in your life. Um, so we're on, the, we're on the right track here. Uh, I think uh, that that kind of mindset, examining ourselves, um, will affect our lives and our communities more than any other thing. Listen, more than political leveraging of this crisis, more than uh, the financial assistance that's come out of this crisis. I think looking at ourselves and having a little bit of a divine reset will benefit us more than the deepening leadership principles that are coming out of this crisis. Just people getting back to where they need to be with Jesus is going to be the thing that helps us most during this season. That'll be the best thing that comes out of this season. Just people getting back to where they need to be with Jesus. Amen? Uh, can I just share one thing with you? Anytime we want to see God working in our life in greater measure, uh, the key is this, that we get our eyes off of ourself and on Jesus. Amen. I'm going to say that again, that we get our eyes off of ourself and on Jesus. If we're saying through this season, uh, if God is saying, listen, that, that verse in Revelation, if God is saying to us through this season, I want you to kind of recalibrate your heart. I want you to do a divine reset. I want to be in agreement with that. I don't want to say, oh, I just want this season to be over with. I can't wait till I can get back to life to normal. Uh, I want to pause and say, hey, Lord, let us get the full measure of what you want to do in our hearts through this season, a divine reset. And anytime we're asking God to work on our hearts, anytime we want to see uh, a greater working of God in our lives, it starts with this, not getting your eyes on your need. Oh, I have a great need here. I want God to work on this need. Oh, I have this, you know, this, this vision over here. I want to see this come to pass. Or I have this goal that I want to attain. That's not when we see the greatest move of God in our life. When we see the greatest move of God working in our life is when we get our eyes off of ourselves, 
off of our situation and just get them back on Jesus. Come on. Just telling God how much we love him, how much we worship him, how much we're thankful for the work that he's doing in our lives. That's when we begin to see the greatest working of God in our lives. And I think that that's what God is doing through this season. I know it is true for me. We need to understand this, that getting our eyes off of ourselves and on Jesus, we need to understand this as we get into this word this morning, because it takes us, it takes us getting our eyes off of ourself. Amen. When I think of self, I think of self-willed. I think of self-absorbed, self-sabotaging, and eventual self-destruction. And it's, it's hard in the midst of a time of crisis like this to not have our eyes on ourself, to not think about my future, to not think about my security. But let me tell you, friend, the best thing you can do is get your eyes on Jesus. Amen? Here's a question. Are there areas where God is saying, get your eyes back on Jesus, uh, where you've taken them off of him? I feel like there's some people listening to me this morning that you've taken your eyes off Jesus. Hey, come on, I'm with you. You've taken your eyes off Jesus in some areas, and he's saying, I want you to refocus a divine reset. I want you to get your eyes back on me. Maybe it's with your church attendance. Maybe it's with your giving and your generosity. Maybe it's with your Bible reading. Maybe it's with your prayer. Maybe it's with your patience. We got to get our eyes back on Jesus. Listen, uh, if that's true for you, we'd love to pray with you. Uh, send us a comment this morning. You can do that right after the message. You can do it right now if you want. Just click on the link there this morning below, and you can write us a little comment and say, hey, listen, I want to get my eyes back on Jesus in this area. I know I need to get my eyes back on Jesus. In this area. I've taken my eyes off of Jesus, and I want to focus again on him in this area or in that area. And we'll definitely lift this up with you before God and pray about that for you. I feel like it's an opportunity. Amen. Let's talk for a second about divine reset. Um, out of this coronavirus outbreak, I believe that there are also some things that God wants to break out. Amen. Uh, I believe God wants us to break out of any apathy that has said, and that's just kind of a lack of concern for spiritual things. I think God wants a concern for spiritual things to be at the forefront of our life. Amen. Uh, I believe God wants us to break out of unforgiveness that has set in. I believe God wants us to break out of any addictions that have set in. You know, it's the coronavirus outbreak. How about let's have, you know, for an outbreak of forgiveness happen, an, an outbreak of purpose happen, an outbreak of generosity happen. Come on, I'd like to see that overtake the community. Um, see, Genesis 50, 20, Joseph tells his brothers who sold him into slavery, as for you, you meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. This was a situation in Joseph's life where it started out rough, but it turned it out, turned out for the better. Amen. And I believe that's what's going to happen with this season of this Corona issue that we went into it, it kind of jarred us, but God's going to redeem the situation and bring gold out of this already. I know that's already happening in my life, that God is causing me to examine myself, look at my values, look at how I interact with other people, look how I'm concerned for other people during this season. He's speaking to me big time through this. Um, can I just tell you that the freedom, deliverance, salvation of many people is contingent upon us allowing God to do the work in us that he wants to do. Just like Joseph submitted to God and God did the work in him, took him through some tough seasons, if you know the story. But God was able to minister to a lot of other people because Joseph allowed God to work through him in that manner. It's the same thing for us. If we take this season and let God do a work in our hearts through this season, a, a divine reset, I believe that that will have a triggering effect for a lot of other people that are going to come to Christ. They're going to find freedom. Amen. Here's a few divine resets that I'm sensing God is calling us to focus on. I want to give you just three, then I'm going to wrap up. Man, there could be 20 divine resets. I need to reset in that area, God. I need to reset in that area. I need to reset in that area. I feel like there's three big ones here that God's speaking to us. First thing, we need to reset our expectations. Wow. When that dropped on me, I was like, yeah. 
listen, let's believe God to do God-sized things. I want to reset my expectations. Sometimes we get in a little groove in life as a believer. We're cruising along. Things are going well. The bills are paid. We love our church. We're involved. And we slip into this mode where we quit believing God. Come on, like the day we needed him or all was lost. Amen. We need God just as bad today as the day, the last day of our sinful living. We need him just as bad today as we did the day we got saved. Amen. But sometimes we get lulled into kind of this apathy. You know, we need to break out of that. We need to reset our expectations. I know I do. Reset. Believe God to do God-sized things. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think, Ephesians 3.20. Listen, I think our expectations are too low sometimes because we feel like all our victories, all our effectiveness, all our efforts are up to us. Paul is reminding us that you have, you, if you have your power at work with you, you're going to fail. But you have God's power. It says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above through the power that works in us. Listen, man, we need to get, again, our eyes off of ourselves and on Jesus and get our expectations up again to believe God to do God-sized things. We get our expectations set too low sometimes. I always want to be in the place where I must trust in God's power. That's a good one. I always want to be in the place where I must trust in God's power. It might not be a moment-by-moment -moment thing, but in a season, I'm always in a season I'm always in a season believing God, you know, to reach that friend of mine that doesn't know him. Believing God for expansion in some area. Believing God for deliverance for somebody. Believing God for growth in some area of my life. I always want to be in a season of trusting in God's power. That keeps us on the cutting edge in our relationship with God. I don't want to grow into this complacent, you know, uh, relationship with him. Let's reset our expectations. Some of us need a grander vision for life. Amen. If it's, it, it, it's his power that's at work within us, not our own power. And quite frankly, some of us have gotten to some places on our abilities and, you know, the blessing of God. And then we've kind of rested now and we've quit believing him. I want to encourage you this morning to reset your expectations. Get them back up there where God is. Amen. Doing things that we can't do. Second thing we need to reset is our passion. And I want to borrow from our text earlier this morning in the book of Revelation. I want to read this again. Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you've left your first love. I don't know about you, but I've had some extra time lately around the house because we can't be out you know, doing all the things that we normally do. And it's caused me to contemplate my relationship with God a little bit more. It just has slowed me down some. Um, and it's caused me to ask myself, hey, Mark, are you just as passionate about me today as you were 20 years ago? As you were 15 years ago? As you were 10 years ago, five years ago? Man, those are some years rolling by. In Jesus, loving life. But is my passion at the level that it was? Come on, somebody. As a new believer. And I believe we go from glory to glory. I don't believe your fire dies. You know, I remember one time being at work someplace. And there was a person there who used to go to church. And I was talking with his co-worker. And I was talking with him. They asked me, how long have you been saved? And I said, um, you know, a couple years. They said, uh, it shows. And like, oh, you're zealous because you've only been saved a couple years. Just wait. And you're going to grow cold and apathetic like the rest of us. I mean... I want to be just as on fire today as I was the day I got saved. We grow, we mature, we have a different perspective, a better perspective sometimes on things, but the passion stays there, amen? We need to reset our passion. Listen, take three things here. Make up your mind you're going to actively work uh, on your relationship with God. Three things to reset your passion. Make up your mind. Make up your mind that you're going to do it. We make up our mind on things all the time. Some of you have made up your mind on the first restaurant you're going to go to once we're released from sheltering in place. You've made up your mind on some things. We need to make up our mind that we're going to work actively on our relationship with God. Second thing, 
Confess and pray about your current condition. Just confess it. I'm not as on fire as I used to be, God. I need to pray. I need to ask you to fan the flame that's in my heart. Just confess it. Third thing, take action. Right. Have a plan to reset your passion for God. Connect with a life group. Start a reading plan. We're going to offer some help with that if you'd like. Um, just again, you can comment if you're interested in starting an amazing reading and journaling plan. Comment in the section there below. And uh, there's a place where you can leave your comments. And we'll connect with you. and We'll let you know when you can jump online with us. And we're going to show you how to start a reading plan. Come on. And a journaling plan that's going to bless your life. Amen. Oh, Pastor Mark, we love it when you smile on camera. Amen. I love you guys. Hey, let's, come on guys, let's ramp up to amp up. Man, I've been waiting all week to use that line. Let's ramp up to amp up. Let's reset the passion in our lives. Amen. Last thing here. Wow, this is a good one. Let's reset our proximity to leaders. Whoo, man, these were not my ideas. Amen. They're just too good to be my ideas. That you be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises, Hebrews 6.12. Don't be slothful, don't be apathetic, but follow those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. In other words, put yourself in proximity to leaders. We talked about this a few weeks ago. What voices do you let speak into your life? Um, listen, there are people God places in our lives to learn from. Church, this has to become a value to you as an individual Christian. You must make a commitment to those relationships. To be clear, those people are not always going to be the people that tell you everything you want to hear. I just gave you three things right there that we could take home and just meditate on, okay? There are people that God places in our lives to learn from them, amen. When you're green, you're growing. When you're ripe, you're rotten. If you're a person that says, Oh, I, I don't need anybody leading me. I'm already established. That's not true. We, we were always growing. Amen? Uh, so there are people that God places in our lives to learn from them. You must make a commitment to those relationships. Pursue those people. You know, develop relationships. I still per pursue people today. I call people. I ask if I can meet with people, people that I'm looking to to speak into my life. And then you got to understand that these people are not going to always tell you everything you want to hear. I know I kind of cut right to the chase right there, but you know, these are the kind of people that we want to have in our lives. Listen, we would probably not be broadcasting from this facility right now uh, had I not lived what I'm preaching to you this morning. We would not probably not be in this facility. We had a facility years ago that we wanted to relocate to. We were in our location in downtown. Many of you remember that building. Uh, and we wanted to move from that building. Just there was no parking. It was very tough down there and we needed more space. And so we had found a property. And the people that speak into my life um, that are over me, uh, I consider mentors and leaders, didn't feel that that was God's will. And I was struggling with it and, and wanting their counsel. Why would I want their counsel if the general consensus of elders in my life, if you know my story, that's one of the things that I use to move forward in making big decisions. I have to have the general consensus of elders in my life. I didn't have that. And so, you know, it kind of, you know, it was a bummer to walk through that season where they were saying, I just don't feel that this is God. It's not the first time I've had someone over me tell me that in my life. And let me tell you, when I've listened to them, it saved my bacon. And so uh, we had found the building. We wanted to relocate. I was running it by some of my team of elders in my life. And yeah, they weren't co-signing for it. Let's just say that. Yeah, it was a great building. It had like 30 spaces, car parking spaces. We were, I was so excited, man. Let's run this deal. We can do it. We can relocate, sell our building. Well, it didn't happen. And then several years later, God moved us into the facility that we're in right now. And we paid for this building almost cash. 90% of the building was paid for immediately. It just was amazing. We'd have 30 spaces. We had over two acres with over 100 spaces. I mean, this is what happens when you put yourself in proximity to leaders. Some of us need to reset that area of our life. We've gotten away from anyone speaking into our lives. Reset our proximity to leaders. Um, so 
I want you guys to take those two steps this morning. The first step where you write down, contact us, let me know of an area where you feel like you've taken your eyes off Jesus and you want to reset your focus on him again in that area. The second one was to let us know you're interested in taking a step in, you know, um, starting an amazing reading plan that'll help reset your passion if you're not doing that. Amen. So let me close this out this morning and let me let you know of just a couple quick things here. Um, you can reconnect with your life group guys. Uh, like I said, you can uh, reconnect with um, us at the church if you have a need, um, any need at all too. It doesn't matter what it is. And you know, everything's online now. But if you know somebody who maybe isn't online, who hasn't viewed this, uh, you know, share their need with us for them. We could reach out to them and help. We want to do that. So I want to take a moment and just pray for you guys this morning. God, I just thank you for people listening to this live stream. We got through it again this morning, Lord. We're here just surrendering to you. I pray, God, that this divine reset that we've been talking about would become a reality for us, God. Uh, yeah. We'd reset some areas of our life and align them with you and see the blessing come to our life because of that. We receive this word today. If you're praying with me this morning, just say, I, I receive this word today. And, and for those of you who may not know Jesus Christ and you just tuned in, I'm not going to close this broadcast without giving you an opportunity to say, Jesus, I need you in my life. So if that's you right where you're sitting there right now, it wouldn't be the first testimony of someone saying, I was sitting on my couch listening to somebody talk on the television screen or now it's on the computer screen, whatever. And, and I prayed and God touched my life. So if you need to do that, I just want to pray with you. All you need to say is, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Cause me to be the Christian that you want me to be. I forsake myself, my own will, and I give myself over to you, God. Begin to work in my life. I receive you. I want to receive your leadership. I want to receive the transformation that you bring into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that this morning, do me a favor. Most important thing that can happen today is for someone to make that decision. Let us know. We want to send you something to help you out this first couple weeks of your walk with God. And uh, we can't wait to meet you when we're meeting back together again physically in our building. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Reach out to us. I'll be seeing you this week online. We love you.